Polycystic ovarian syndrome has multiple root causes. Discovering your root cause is the key to helping you manage your PCOS. Today, we're going to dive into the second most common root cause for PCOS, and that is the adrenal PCOS. If you need more information about the four types of PCOS, check out the video we've just made about that. But if you've already checked out that video and you're pretty sure you have adrenal PCOS, then keep watching because this is for you. Hi, my name is Sam. I'm a clinical nutritionist with a special interest in PCOS. Each week, I'm bringing you simple, actionable nuggets of information about PCOS and how you can manage your symptoms naturally using the Nourish Natural Health PCOS Repair Protocol. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's dive in. Unlike insulin-resistant PCOS, which is the more common type of PCOS, adrenal PCOS happens when there is a huge amount of stress hormones that go on to affect other parts of your body, leading to things like irregular cycles, facial hair growth, hair thinning, and all of the lovely other other PCOS symptoms. This PCOS type is more of an issue with the adrenal glands rather than the ovaries. In those who live with adrenal PCOS, prolonged stress leads to a high amount of DHEAs. DHEAs are a part of the testosterone family and these are high androgen hormones. Studies do suggest that there is a genetic link here with some women who have excess adrenal androgens and these are the women with a predisposition to having adrenal PCOS. Let's talk about the link between DHEAs and PCOS. PCOS a little bit more in depthly. When there is chronic prolonged stress and your body is pumping out cortisol and DHEAs, these DHEAs have a similar effect in the body to testosterone. And when they're in excess, they can trigger specific symptoms. For one, they stimulate hair follicles across the jawline in the male hair growth pattern, which causes female hair growth. It also has the opposite effect in hair follicles, causing them to die off, leading to women experiencing hair thinning in the male hair loss pattern. It can also cause acne and it interacts with other hormones. So a high level of DHEAs interferes with the release of luteinizing hormone. So DHEAs can be converted into the more potent DHT. DHT intensifies hormonal androgen excess symptoms. And these include facial hair growth, hair thinning, acne, and they even interact with other hormones that control your menstrual cycle. An increase in these androgenic hormones actually interacts with your brain's ability to release luteinizing hormone, which is a key hormone that's needed to trigger ovulation. And this is why we see so many women living with PCOS experiencing irregular menstrual cycles. Now, one really interesting thing about adrenal PCOS when compared to insulin resistant PCOS is that that those living with adrenal PCOS don't often experience weight gain. And this weight gain is typically very common in those with insulin resistant PCOS. So that means if weight gain isn't a symptom for you with your PCOS, you may be living with adrenal PCOS, not insulin resistant PCOS. We also know that whilst an elevated DHEA level in the body has a similar effect to elevated testosterone in the body with those living with PCOS, this isn't measured by blood tests with doctors, despite its significance. This means you could have elevated levels of DHEA, but then you may have a doctor telling you that you don't have elevated levels of testosterone. If you're seeing the symptoms of high androgenic levels and you haven't experienced weight gain, there is a very real chance that you are living with adrenal PCOS. Here at Nourish Natural Health, we've seen many clients over the years who are living with the symptoms of adrenal excess yet they've been told by their doctor that they don't actually have high levels of androgens. And this explains why. So let's talk about what causes these high stress levels that go on to influence adrenal PCOS. There are so many stresses that come about in life, including psychological stress, but also poor sleep and chronic infection. All of these things are stress on the body that can lead to adrenal PCOS. There are some other stresses in life that people may not think about as much as well. These are things like excessive exercising. Because exercise does actually cause a stress response in the body. If your exercise is exceptionally rigorous and very high intense and happens quite often, it may not actually be having a beneficial effect in your body. Other things that you may not expect to be contributing to adrenal PCOS is restrictive diets and loneliness. Both of these things do induce a stress response, which again is just hiring those levels of androgens in the body. Having a high amount of stress or a very impactful life event during puberty can also also go on to predispose you to sensitivity to stress during adulthood. 
childhood. This means that if you experienced something that was truly life-changing and very stressful during your younger years, you may have rewired your brain to be very susceptible to stressful events, meaning that when you experience stress in your day-to-day -day life as an adult, you may have the kind of response that goes on to produce a huge amount of stress hormones, predisposing you to adrenal PCOS. So if this is starting to sound like you, but you're still not quite convinced, let's go over some of the signs that you may be living with adrenal PCOS. This is not a comprehensive list, just some of the items on the list. If you do want the full list, head over to the Nourish Natural Health website where you can access the blog and read about all the signs and symptoms of adrenal PCOS. First is experiencing a high or significant amount of stress in the last five years. Having a sense that you react very strongly to specific stresses in your life and it does take you a long time to recover. Having blood tests that show normal or low signs of testosterone yet still struggling with the symptoms of high androgen levels. These include facial hair growth, acne, hair loss and irregular menses. Another sign is having high DHEAs in blood or urine testing, struggling to get up and go in the morning, constantly relying on caffeine or other stimulants for energy and having your best energy before bed or after about 6 p.m. Don't forget to check out the Nourish Natural Health website so you can check out the list of the signs and symptoms of adrenal PCOS. Whilst you're there, you may also find the quiz to find out what the root cause of your PCOS is. Some people who take this find that they actually have high scores for both insulin resistance and adrenal PCOS. Now this can actually happen because high stress can lead to insulin resistance and insulin resistance in turn places high stress on the body, exacerbating adrenal PCOS. So essentially each condition is feeding each other and then just growing the beast together. So whilst this may seem really stressful and overwhelming, it's actually a good thing because by tackling one type of PCOS, you're actually tackling the other as well. And it is best to tackle just one at a time. And if you are someone who has two types of root causes of PCOS, we recommend that you tackle one that you identify with the most. And if you can't decide which one that is, we recommend that you tackle insulin resistance first. Now, if you're still not convinced and you want some more evidence on if you are struggling with adrenal PCOS, let's talk about the tests that you can do to confirm adrenal PCOS. So whilst cortisol can be tested, it is very hard to get it accurately through blood. A more detailed analysis can come from a saliva or urine cortisol test. These are more sensitive and can detect earlier signs of hormonal changes. And these hormones should ideally be tested at multiple times throughout the day. The reason for this is you wanna be able to track the rise and fall of your stress hormones and DHEAs throughout the day. This will offer valuable insight into how your body is responding to these stress hormones, where they're elevated, and where they may be out of line. This gives you really good insight into how your body is operating with adrenal PCOS. Now for these tests, it's best to go with a practitioner who is trained in ordering and interpreting these kinds of tests, specifically the Dutch test, which is the dried urine test for comprehensive hormones. And in order to find a practitioner, you can find an accredited one in your area simply by looking at certain directories. Now it's also important to note that whilst these tests provide very valuable insight, they aren't the standard to diagnose adrenal PCOS. You don't have to get these tests. Mostly they just offer insight to help your management program. So now that we know all about adrenal PCOS and exactly what's happening in the body, let's talk about the core treatments. As you may have guessed, the primary goal with adrenal PCOS is to get your cortisol levels under control. Because by managing cortisol, we're also managing your DHEA levels, which are the hormone that are going on to cause all those nasty PCOS symptoms. In order to do this, obviously stress management is not Number one, which brings us to our first core treatment for adrenal PCOS, empty your stress bucket. This is something you should be doing regularly in order to really offload all these stresses that may be bouncing around in your head. You can start by listing the sources of pressure in your life that are both good and bad. Once you've made the list, review it and identify the really significant stresses. From there, we assess if any of these significant stresses can maybe be scaled back to help you manage your stress levels, or perhaps better boundaries need to be put in place. Whatever it is, once you have identified those significant stresses, it is then time to create an action plan to help reduce the impact that those stresses have on your cortisol production. This isn't a one-time activity and we really recommend that you repeat it quite often in order to make sure that you know exactly where your stresses are coming from and how you can manage them. Core treatment number two for adrenal PCOS is to implement a stress lowering morning routine. In order to set you up to make sure that you are resilient to stress throughout 
the day, create a 10 to 15 minute morning routine that really helps you get your stress response under control. You want to include anything that uplifts you and relaxes you. Anything that's really gentle, things like breathing, meditation, journaling, or even coloring in are all very good for relaxation. And doing this first thing in the morning really sets the tone for the rest of the day. And when it becomes a ritual, it really begins to become just that little part of your day, which is just for you. Think of it as taking care of yourself before you go out in the world and take care of others. Core treatment number three for adrenal PCOS is to make time for joy. There are lots of people out there living with PCOS who tend to be the caregivers of their family, taking care of everyone else. This means that sometimes you're left to feel like there's no space for you to actually have fun. And experiencing joy often is a key factor in reducing your stress levels. This means that each and every week, you should be prioritizing space to make sure that you are experiencing joy in any way that that can happen for you. This may be socializing and catching up with friends, going to some kind of hobby group, or any other activity which may even seem trivial or childlike. These kinds of trivial and childlike activities really are the key to joy, which will help to manage your stress levels. It's time to to embrace that inner child and do all of the things that you always wanted to as a teenager but maybe didn't because you were scared of judgment. It's time to bring them back! So make time in your calendar for it and be ruthless about it. Make sure that you actually do engage in something that brings you joy. This time is for you. Next core treatment number four for treating adrenal PCOS is to reduce or avoid caffeine. The reason for this is because caffeine is a stimulant which can stimulate the stress response in the body which we know isn't always the best thing for those living with adrenal or PCOS. So if you are someone who is having a huge amount of caffeine, it's best to begin to taper off slowly to avoid too many withdrawal symptoms. You may not have to give it up altogether. You may just need to monitor your sensitivity to caffeine and see where maybe it's not so helpful. By being aware of your caffeine intake and maybe understanding where it is not helping you out, this will give you an idea of how you can manage your caffeine intake that works best for you. Core treatment number five is to assess your exercise levels. Whilst we know that exercising can lower your stress hormones, over-exercising actually has the opposite effect. And the best way to know if you are overdoing it is if you're still feeling really tired 15 minutes after you've finished your exercising. If you are overdoing it with exercise, then this can really build up your stress response hormones. And this may also be a good time to switch over to more gentle, relaxing exercising. This can be things like walking, yoga, or even slow-paced weight training. We have made a video detailing the best exercises for PCOS and you can check that out in the description below. Now this may only be temporary whilst we get your stress response under control and then you may be able to go back to your high intensity exercise. However, balance is key. So even if you do return to your high intensity exercise once you have your stress response under control, it's still a good idea to constantly monitor and make sure that you are involving those more slower paced exercises for better stress relief. Core treatment number six is to balance your melatonin and cortisol. One non-negotiable factor to managing adrenal PCOS is to get your sleep in order. And this very much means going to bed at a consistent time and waking up at a consistent time every single day. Melatonin is our sleepy hormone, which naturally builds up as you approach your bedtime. And in opposition, as melatonin builds up, cortisol levels actually go down, meaning that melatonin and cortisol are kind of having a bit of a seesaw. And this is why managing melatonin can help to manage cortisol. Now, melatonin is triggered by light. This means that bright screens at nighttime, including TV, smartphones, and devices, can really mess with your melatonin buildup. In addition to keeping the same bedtime and awake time every single day, even on weekends, it is also best to shut off light emitting devices about a half an hour before you go to sleep. It also helps to wear blue light blocking glasses at nighttime, as well as keeping lighting dim in the room that you're in. If you really do struggle to get to sleep, we highly recommend listening to a guided meditation right before you go to sleep to help mellow you out a little bit and to start that consistent bedtime, which is so important for good quality sleep. So once you tackle your sleep, you will find that your melatonin will naturally start to build up towards the end of the night. Once this happens, we also know that cortisol is beginning to balance in a healthy way. Managing your sleep manages melatonin, which manages cortisol. Core treatment number seven for managing PCOS is to try 
a stress lowering herbal blend. So along with all the management tips that we've just covered, including nutritional supplements can also help quite a bit. And here at Nourish Natural Health, one of our favorite herbs for stress relief is ashwagandha root. It is a clinically proven herb that lowers stress, lowers cortisol and lowers anxiety. Researchers conducted an eight week study which compared those taking ashwagandha root to a controlled placebo group. In the results of this study, those taking ashwagandha root had a lower perceived amount of anxiety and stress at the end of the study when compared to those in the placebo group. The participants that were taking the ashwagandha root also had significantly better sleep quality, which as we just learned is very important for adrenal PCOS. At the Nourish Natural Health website, you can get your hands on our Calm and De-Stress supplement, which contains ashwagandha root to help you manage your stress levels. And lastly, core treatment number eight is to support and stabilize your blood sugar. Stabilizing your blood sugar throughout the day also helps to support your cortisol production throughout the day. When you haven't eaten for a long period of time or when your blood sugar gets too low for any other reason, sometimes this happens after eating a very sugary meal, your body releases a high amount of cortisol. And this happens because low blood sugar is a signal of stress to the body. And so the body releases cortisol to help you deal with this stress. But then the cortisol goes on to produce all of these wacky PCOS symptoms. So thanks for nothing. <laughs> so to avoid this cycle and to avoid your blood sugar from dropping really low, we recommend that you implement the PCOS plate method. With the PCOS plate method, we want about 25% of your plate to be made up of animal-based protein, 25% to be gentle starches. This can be things like quinoa, and then 50% of your plate can be made up with low starchy vegetables. These are things like cauliflower, asparagus, and spinach. Also be sure to include some kind of healthy fat on your plate, something like olive oil or avocado, and this actually helps you absorb the nutrients from your food. And if you get hungry between meals, it's a really good idea to plan with some healthy snacks. Make sure that these snacks are high in good quality fats or in protein or both. Specifically, good quality protein will help to regulate your blood sugar levels, which goes on to regulate your cortisol levels. So now we've gone over exactly what causes adrenal PCOS and what we can do to manage these symptoms. If you're still a bit confused and you need some more information, head over to the Nourish Natural Health website. There, you can take a test to find out what the root cause of your PCOS is, if you're still not quite sure after this video. You can also join in the Nourish Natural Health community so you can connect with other like-minded women so you know that you're not alone on your management journey. Is there anything more that you want to know about adrenal PCOS? We'd love to help. Make sure you leave a comment below and tell us what you're dying to know. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be reminded when we come out with another video about PCOS. My name is Sam and I will see you in the next one. Bye!